keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the button below. Hi there, welcome to this video from racingbetdata.com. Uh, following on from the popularity of recent um, videos and discussion points around uh, trading, backing to lay, laying to back, uh, we thought we would bring you an additional video uh, to show you a little bit more detail around the, um, the odds increments that are used on Betfair and how backing uh, and laying at different levels will return you a different profit, but using the same uh, level of ticks as your offset. Um, we'll also see if backing blindly can uh, generate a profit based on certain odds bands. Um, and we will show you now how you can calculate your profit uh, quite simply. So I've navigated to the Racing Bet Data website and in the our data section, there is an example download page. Now I'm logged in as an advanced member, but this page is accessible to all uh, basic or visitors to the site. And all of these files are accessible to you for you to download for free. And the one that we're going to look at here uh, quickly is the green up. And I'm just going to open this file and explain the calculation in here, because this is what we'll be using in the sheet that I'll bring up in a moment. So just open up this file. OK, here's the uh, green up spreadsheet. Now, what you can do is put in your um, back odds here and your tick change. So let's say we want to drop by 10 ticks. And what it does is show you the exit point, the lay odds. Uh, and based on a hundred pound stake, initial stake, your profit would be 28 pounds, assuming the um, trade met that lay point in running or pre-off, however you're looking to do it. So you can vary up the, the starting odds and you can vary up the tick change and that will calculate the, the exit point, the lay odds, and also your profit based on the stake that you want to apply. Uh, the profit is net, uh, is inclusive, sorry, of commission of a 2% commission, which is the typical uh, level that uh, most users of Betfair will be on. Uh, and you can do the same for, for laying to back. So if you were to lay at 5.6 uh, and have a tick change of 10 based on a £50 liability or £10.87 stake, that would be your profit after commission uh, and your exit point. So obviously you're back laying at 5.6 to exit at 7.2. And again, you can amend your, uh, your, your liability uh, and your tick changes and your starting point here. So this spreadsheet is open, accessible for all of you to use and access. Um, and I recommend that you do do so. That familiarizes yourself with how you back, how you lay, how the odds change and what that profit means. Now, I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that I have prepared earlier, which will do what I've just explained all in one place. So bring this spreadsheet up and get the odds tab. So I'll explain from left to right what we have here and also encompassing the graph. So what I've listed in column D here are all the odds increments on Betfair. So we can scroll through from top to bottom, 1.01 right the way through to 1000 being the highest. Um, and then um, index these um, so you can see that there are 350 different odds points in the markets. Um, and these are decimal odds. So they're a reflection of a fraction of odds. So if you're more familiar with a two to one, three to one, that sort of thing, it's a, a it's exactly the same thing. It's just displayed in decimal format rather than being 10 to one on, for instance, it shows as 1.1. Now you'll notice here that the increments go up in different levels and that's where people do trade around what's called resistant points or pinch points in the market. So you can see here we start and we go up by um, 0.1 increments uh, and as we move through to uh, 2 which is evens we start going up in 0, uh, 0 0.02 increments so you can see here dropping 10 ticks this way um, will be a lower um, risk or element than going 10 ticks this way so if we count out 10 here um, we go to 2.2 if we count 10 here we go to 1.9. So you're 0.2 ahead right, and you're 0.1 below um, the even mark. So that's where people do look to trade around these resistance points. And it's something to, to bear in mind. And it does affect your profitability 
if you're if you're doing swing trading um, in particular. But back on track with what I was explaining about these resistance points, you can see then we get to the next one, which is three. It goes up in increments of uh, 0.05. Uh, and then when we get to four, it goes in increments of 0.1. Then when we get to six, it goes in increments of 0.2. And then as we get to 10, it goes to 0.5 and so on. So you can see here that the actual resistance points go up in different scales as the price increases. So that's what I have in columns D and E. Then in up the top here, we have, I've used the 10 pound and the 10 tick just to, to start with. But these can be toggled. Um, this sheet is designed for the purpose of this video alone, just to demonstrate. So it's not doing anything spectacular other than it's collated. I've collated about three years worth of data in here. And I'm demonstrating here really rough cut with these. Um, there's no fa fancy graphics or presentation here. It's it's pure raw data that I've analysed, and I'm just talking you through um, what what the um, the data tells us. So what we have here is the exit point. So we're using ten ticks. So if we were to enter at one point one one for a back, ten ticks below would be one point zero one. So technically a win, maybe not. Some horses do trade down to one point zero one and do not win, but more often than not, it'd be a win. Um, then what we have is the profit that would be calculated. So again, I've used the uh, the green up sheet that we um, just brought to your attention on screen. It's the same calculation method. So we're using the back bet here, back odds, the lay odds and the stake. And that forms the uh, uh, calculation to generate the profit that you would get for, a, for every successful trade backing here, laying here. Uh, and again, that includes a 2% commission. Now, this links in with the graph. So you can see here the back odds down the bottom, and you can see the return based on a unit stake of 10 in the graph. So you can see this gradually tapers down all the way until we get to around evens or two just before it, but it picks up and it tapers off again. And then you see this trend going all the way through um, until we get to around about 18, odds of 18, where it gradually, or it, um, rapidly shoots up uh, until it plateaus here at around the 50 uh, odds mark at, at £9.80. Now you can see that here, if I scroll all the way down, exactly what I've said. So this is where the data is pulling from. So 50, which is the, uh, the back price of 100, sorry, um, £9.80. So that's the maximum. It sits at that level for 12, 10, 12 ticks, and then it declines back down again. So you can see that on the graph. So it sits here. And then if you're backing at these levels and laying 10 ticks below, the profit um, suddenly drops off as we go. So that's something to consider where you have, you know, if you wanted to make a minimum return of four, you could highlight across this line and see the odds that you need to back at. So it actually goes above it and then drops back down. So there's a, a void in here uh, and then all of these above and then you'd cut off at a point here using that as an example, but it's just to illustrate to you that you do not get the same return by backing to lay at 10 ticks on any starting price. This, the return is variable based on the starting price. And you can see that as I scroll through here, eventually tapers back down to, to almost to a pound to 10%, um, as you can see there. So that's one thing to be conscious of when you're backing to lay. If you're looking for those 10 ticks, the returns you'll get um, will be different based on those SP odds. So you might want to tailor any system or strategy that you have in mind based around those odd points. So then the next thing to, to consider is, well, historically, how well have these odds points performed? So I've got in this data tab um, over about three years worth of data straight from the um, racing bet data data um, dashboard outputs because we have the tick reduction column already in there we can quite easily use that to calculate um, horses that have dropped by 10 or more ticks so that is in here's the data output um, I've got some filters on at the minute if we look at um, the column here tick reduction AF you can see horses that have dropped by their, their value in play. Now we do have to consider ones that didn't drop, um, 
at all. So that needs to be factored in. And I've taken that, that into account when doing this calculation here. So what we have in this column, uh, start on column J first, are the number of horses that I have in that data set that have started the race with a BSP of 1.1, and then the number of horses that have hit 1.01 in running. So as I said before, technically the number of winners, but it might be that one of the horses or a couple of the horses traded down to 1.01, but didn't end up winning. So we've looked for horses that have traded at that level matching a minimum of £100. So this is, again, data straight out of the data archive. So where we use the Betfair price, where it traded to a minimum of 100 So it gives you some reliability that you would, uh, would have been matched at that level. So you can see using this example, seven horses um, with a 1.11 BSP. Six of those traded down to 1.01. One didn't. So that means backing at a unit stake of 10, would have made an overall loss of £4.18 pence based on your 97 pence return. Uh, and you can see that all the way through for each odd increment, the number of races, number of horses, all the way down. So you can see here, just on this quick example, even if I highlight um, just to here, so betting between 1.11 and 1.19 over the period of three years, uh, would have returned a net profit of £48.69 for those 159 races. Um, we can scroll down and see if there's any trends appearing. Um, you can see a lot of these are loss, net loss. So this is exactly what I was explaining in, the, uh, in some of our other videos where our data plays such an important role. Um, it guides you towards the horses that you need to be selecting based on a set of criteria looking at that horse's history, how it's performed before over similar conditions, and then using your human cognitive functions to, to assess on the day of the race whether that horse is suitable for trading. It, it could be that there are changes to the going, for instance, the horse, the way it's uh, behaving in the stalls or leading up to the beginning of the race, uh, change of jockey, anything like that could influence your decision to to not go ahead with that trade. So that is something that data cannot tell you. Data can lead you a certain way towards honing in on a, a horse or selection of horses, but ultimately you need to make that decision to make sure that you are happy that everything is being met in those conditions that you have looked for. This here is pure uh, starting price driven data. There is no functionality, no conditions, nothing else applied. We're purely looking at horses that have started the race at that price and uh, at that price and how, how many have traded down to that level, uh, which is here, 792, based on £1.56 return over 1,038 races, you would have ended up not a uh, net loss on that batch of horses. But let's scroll down a little bit further because it gets a little bit interesting as we get down towards the bottom here, because so, you can see that once we hit the 200 mark, which is the tail end of this £9.80 return, so a horse uh, SP of 200, 10 tick below is 100. Um, you can see here that if we grab this section of data all the way up to 450, so from 200 to 450, that would have returned over the period of three years that we're looking at a profit of £3,189 uh, for those um, 15,000 15, races that we collect in there. So that might be something to look at. We're Backing blind here is purely based on starting price and the money that you return based on those 10 ticks dropping. Now, this is all race types, UK and Ireland. We've not filtered it by distance or by tracks or there is no filtering. This is pure data in here. We can go back to the top and we can change this and look at, uh, let's say, 25 ticks uh, with a £20 stake. Um, and this automatically recalculates our graph. So this is, uh, I need to change the scale here, but you can see it goes up in ones, increments of one pound. But again, you can see here, the graph shows as you start approaching here that the profit increases based on 25 ticks below um, on the starting point. And again, plateaus at the top before coming back down. Now, again, interestingly, we look at this, um, 
Now we've dropped down because obviously 25 ticks, you can't back below that and exit at lower than 1.01. So we're using 1.26 as the starting point here. But again, we can grab these first sort of 15 um, or so odds increments and see that you would have returned a 360 pound net profit backing all horses, regardless of conditions in this um, odds category here with a 10, uh, sorry, we've done a 25 tick uh, exit point. Um, and again, if we scroll down towards the bottom to these higher odds horses, you can see a similar pattern. So this time a bit further out. So we were looking at uh, 200 to 450, but again here from 350 all the way down uh, to 520 or 500, you can see that um, there's a net profit based on the backing of these horses with a 25 tick exit point. So it's something to consider, but overall the message is betting blind will result in a loss using data and then steer you towards one, either where you want to be backing in terms of the SP because of the, the higher returns. But that higher returns doesn't necessarily mean overall profit, but using the data that we have, the three years worth of data in our data archive, and we can add to that, we can look at um, bigger data sets. And I can also use the example download for the significant, uh, test the significance of this. One thing looking at the profit, but we do need to test the significance. But essentially what I'm saying is that some of these odds brackets do historically return more money when you're looking to do a back to lay tr trade than others. Um, so the purpose of this video was just to highlight how you can look at this information, how you can understand that backing blind will not generate you a profit, but looking at certain odds markets and then being a bit more granular with the data. Okay, does this uh, react the same way over jumps or does this re react the same way over sprints? Um, you can start building up a picture and potentially another angle for you to look at.